Good morning, good afternoon, hello, and welcome to the European series of our Challenger Cup. My name's F. Dot. I'll be casting in, in place of Hindu Man today, and as always, joined by the reputable Cret. Now, I do have some English blood in me, so I'll be playing the role of your salty Englishman, and F. Dot will be playing the role of your bald uh, analytical North American. We're going to be going into a whole <laughs> bunch of games today, and we're starting off with five angry Hindus and laser unicorns. Now, both of us quite like unicorns. Lasers are pretty cool too, but in honor of our missing comrade who is in Sweden um, doing something with the TSM Invitational, we're not really sure. Uh, we're <laughs> going to be casting his boys from the Five Angry Hindus. Yeah, the Five Angry Hindus are a cool community team that we've seen come in and out. Actually put on a decent enough show. Laser yeah. unicorns as well. Uh, two, of the, two of the teams that we really like to watch during the beginning uh, rounds, so it's fun to actually get to see them face off. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna be moving into picks and vans real soon, but there is there's something interesting happening here. So the five angry Hindus are missing their mid laner, one of the strongest players on their team, which is of course unfortunate. They are running with a sub, but that sub's an ADC player. It's the the guy they could find, right? So what do you do? What do when, you do when their god pool is ADC? You put a hunter in the middle lane, or at least that could be the plan. That's what so. uh, their team cat captain mentioned to me. I would be really excited to see that, just because at this point, in the tournament, sort of the earlier rounds, I think it's okay to be a little bit more flavorful. I definitely agree. Also, um, when it comes to hunters in the middle lane, that's something that can work depending yeah. on the hunter you pick. I'm not going to root for Cupid or Shibalaki anytime soon, but uh, the old-fashioned on her mid never really hurt anybody. Bands are out. Five Angry Hindus opt to ban the Global Athena and the ever-popular Mercury. 98% pick ban rate in the SPL. And on the Laser Unicorn side, we have Nuwa and Habwa. Guys that rhyme and both bring a lot of damage. Yeah, big bans coming out there. It's going to be the Circuit first pick. She is still bugged on this patch, so we'll only be hitting twice with the Death Bane. That said, twice is still often enough to kill. <laughs> She's going to be missing a little bit of her damage. And honestly, I think the biggest loss is you miss an extra chance for that Deathbringer crit, which is often the build. It. We often see Deathbringer before Rage for the chance to murder right. someone. The chance to absolutely murder someone versus a higher chance of murdering someone less. It's a shade of gray. On the other side, Laser Unicorns going into Geb and Rom. Fairly standard second round picks. We often see Very. a Rom this place, but if you prioritize the Rama over the Apollo, which... Honestly, is I think a little bit questionable, um, just because of the global quit presence, but it's still viable. These picks are fine. With the Athena banned out, and with five angry Hindus picks, although laser unicorns couldn't really read those, I'm okay with the ROM pick. Sure, uh, you can ban Apollo, which I actually think is the the go to ban here in our in our secondary ban after laser unicorns picks. And ROM, when it comes to the lane, ROM will beat you. You have to win almost your trade because once you get them low you can just alt and finish them off that's kind of what rom does so rom will beat you in lane if you give him a chance or even give him a hint of a chance so good pick up by laser unicorns to go that way as long as they ban apollo they don't they go ahead and pick jean Kui. so five of your hindus could pick up this apollo to really have a global over the enemy as a thing that's banned out yeah, um, it is going to be the Jean Kui ban, so th that sort of hints to me that Laser Unicorns don't really want to run run ROM. Um, or not ROM, Nemesis. They don't want to run Nemesis, and they don't want to pick Zhang. Because uh, they very well could have banned Nemesis and then picked Zhang, or right. you know, force the Zhang ban out from five angry Hindus. The thing is, so when you ban away Geb, or you ban away Athena, you pick Geb, you're forcing your opponent onto a lower priority support. That said, the lower priority supports are honestly generally better in lane than Athena. Because Athena's ultimate is at best slightly less than useless in lane. Right. It's really more for rotating out of lane and leaving your hunter alone. When it comes to fights in lane, it's more for rotating back, which can be very, very helpful and very strong. But the Ymir we see hovered is very much a stronger support in lane because of his ability to fight and do damage and control in a way that's a little more user-friendly in Athena. Uh, if Athena wants to do damage to you, it's preemptive strike, shield wall, taunt. It gives your opponents a lot of time to respond, whereas Ymir, it's more like 
Blinken freeze to the freeze confirms the two and or the glacial strike, and you can get a lot of damage off. I actually so Geb Ymir is an interesting matchup because Stone Shield is basically destructive against Ymir unless you freeze the Geb. You can kind of kill Geb pretty easily as Ymir. Yeah. Uh, Ymir, Geb, I mean, Geb does have the ability to clear the CC off him, but mm -hmm. Ymir still does a decent amount of damage regardless, and although you're not going to be putting a lot of points into that wall right away, Kret, yeah. you can't cleanse the wall with Stone Shield, so that's going to be a decent enough pickup. Ymir, very important... It's a character that doesn't really jive well in the competitive scene if you don't have the skills to pay the bills. We take a look at Mortality's Frezzy. Gets banned out against him. Even Frosty Act, who's a jungler, sure. gets banned out against him. That seems to be where Ymir's at. Either he's worth a ban because the people playing him are just intensely aware of his situation because of his lack of mobility. You kind of have to be smart about when you engage. Or... Yeah. You just don't bother doing anything with it. We'll see how Five Anger Hindus work out with it, though. I mean, what it comes down to, like, Ymir does have a lack of mobility for sure. You get Blink to supplement that. But his escape isn't terrible. In the right situation, you can wall right. yourself off. And it's like, yeah, you can't chase me. There's a wall. The other thing is, his damage is incredible. You've got 370 base damage on your two, which is one of the highest damage mage abilities. Back off got nerfed. So it's uh, Shockwave at point blank range, and rollout actually has 30 more base damage. And then you've got Ymir's passive, which doubles the damage from your auto attacks, making them hit incredibly hard. Really hard. Ymir is really destructive, but you have to leverage that. Otherwise, you have to be basically psychic with your walls and sort of yeah. just catch Mercury ults all day long to really make Ymir work, which we've seen Frezzy do. Um, but I feel like he's very much an offensive support. Now, uh, looking at the Laser Unicorn's team composition, oh, yeah. I see a lot of team fight, and I love that. You've got a Cataclysm, you've got a Kraken, you've got a Storm Call, and you've got a Fear No Evil. The CC chain, the AoE CC chain, if they do it right, is incredible. It gives Ron plenty of time to follow up with his, uh, his ultimate, his Astral Barrage. It could be really good, but they have to implement their team fight properly. Yeah, there's a lot of execution friendly yeah. uh, characters on the side of laser unicorns. Five ring Hindus, although though also have execution heavy characters. Chiquette, Uller, Ymir. These are characters that really will only flourish and will only really see success if these players really pull out all the stops and actually pull it off. Uh, we're gonna get into the game in just a couple of seconds, so don't worry. First game, European Challenger Cup, week four, underway soon. Good morning and welcome to the action! Five Ringer Hindus, Laser Unicorns. These are the two teams we'll be starting our morning off with. My name's F. Dot, joined here by Kret. Let's take a look at our teams. Now, in the blue trunks is the Five Angry Hindus. They're going to be playing Circuit in the jungle on Jolt's anti bath. Looks like a Hunter Freya. DD Ruler, your support, Ymir. I think it's going to be mid lane Ool. I'm excited for that, though. His mana sustain could be uh, could be troublesome and Typhlosion on Solin Yanis. Or it could be Solin Ool. Either way, it's going to be a Hunter not in the duel lane. It's pretty interesting. First thing I want to take note of, five your Hindus, one physical, and it's just Uller. So we'll see how that works out in no, the No, they have Circuit. They have Circuit. Ah, oh, Circuit, 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 Circuit. Laser Unicorns in the red unis. They're going to be Lemeritz played on Chuck. AF Carminox with the Mechs U in lane. Samister, tier monster streamer, will be playing Hunbats in the jungle. And Luchi on that Poseidon. Well, you know, I'm really excited for this game to get off. You know what the best part about waking up is? EU Challenger Dubstep Cup. Dubstep in your cup? Oh, EU also, Challenger Cup. Also Dubstep in your cup. That's pretty good, too. Both. We can have both. Here at the EU Challenger Cup, we give you Dubstep, we give you games, Ooh, right we side. give you action, and we're going to give you an invade in the first game. Five Angry Hindus are lining up. They're stacking up like a SWAT team, but they're going to get spotted out. And we'll have to awkwardly go clear mid-camp, because they were totally busted. 
<laughs> yeah, definitely. When when it comes to invades, you always try to be sneaky, and you don't want to go into an invade when they know you're coming. So the second mm -hmm. you're spotted out, you're really after a treat, and it's just kind of the walk of shame. Already a stun though in the middle lane from Mr. Mighty Joe. We are going to see that Uller mid. Uh, once the Transcendence comes online, Cred, he should yeah. have no problem. But that's going to be a while, and Lucci's going to run this lane for the first couple of minutes of this match. Yeah, Poseidon's clear is absolutely incredible. He's able to fully clear waves at level 3 with rank 2 Whirlpool, rank 1 Tidal Surge. You just fire on both, wave is cleared. Uller never fully clears waves. Actually never. He will always have to auto attack to clean up. It was a nerf that came out a while ago, and... It was a pretty hard hit, and especially with being low on mana, honestly, I think Mr. Mighty Joe can't really afford to stun. He needs his barbed arrow to clear. I 100% agree with you here, Crit. As he builds that transcendence, he'll actually get that clear. He'll be able to take out the archers and everything but the gladiator minions with a single bladed arrow if he does go into trans instead of the heart seeker. So, yeah. again, it's just the waiting game for Mr. Mighty Joe. He's just got to be okay right here because he's not going to win. Well, he's already Oom, and Poseidon's clear is just too strong, so, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of gold lost, and we'll come back and see what that differential is, assuming nothing else happened, but lane control completely in favor of Poseidon. Right now, in the soul, let's still 2v2, Samister just rotating out. Honestly, a little bit late, he's on the cusp of level 4, and looks like he's going to go and take his safe harpies, so going a more conservative jungle route. I like this route when you're playing Hun Bats. I think this is a good a good idea. Hun Bats is a character that Four needs the farm. Uh, really kind of needs to get that going before he can really make a gank. Pre-5 Hun Bats isn't quite Hun Bats. Character is defined by his ultimate fear no evil. Yeah, I mean, that is just such an important part. You could still do some trickery with your uh, abilities in the crit passive and rotating those out. And if you get lucky, I mean, it's a 30% chance you certainly could crit, but you need every little bit to get that clear. Level 5 is Poseidon first in the game. And he's going to have incredible pressure right now. The Mighty Joe is still losing creeps to tower. Mighty Joe using that hail of arrows instead of the bladed arrow to try and clear. Not a, uh, we'll see how this pans out for him. I, I really want to see this work out, Kret. I like Uller. I don't think he'd be the one I would pick to play the no. middle lane, but that said, he has a good transition. Uh, you have the Freya in the, in the hunter role, so you don't really need that transition. If we had a Neath or something in the hunter role, I'd be more apt to like this choice. Uh, but at the end of the day, hunters do Hunters are the more, do I feel comfortable on this character than almost any other role. Yeah, exactly. You really want to know your character in and out, whereas there's a little bit more wiggle room in some of the other roles. I'd say I'd say support is also a big thing just because they function very differently. But an assassin's an assassin. The mechanics might be different, but your goal is still to murder people. Uh, but mid camps are going to be traded evenly, and mid lane... Getting awkwardly cleared by the Hindus, taking three members to clear that wave efficiently. Poseidon's gonna drop a nice whirlpool and a Kraken coming out. That's gonna be first blood onto Jones. Now, Mr. Mighty Joe able to jump over the wall, but this is the power of Poseidon in the early game. Not able to get the double, but the single is totally fine. Really good read coming out from Poseidon right there. Hats off to Luchi. I like how he just knew, you know, they, they tipped their hand fighting the Hindus. They went into the jungle. No real subversion there. And with that small corner, able to drop both the Whirlpool and the Kraken, push an entire wave onto this mid tower as uh, Mr. Mighty Joe got away, but he did have to go home to heal up and get his mana back. Stay in base just a little bit longer. Mr. Mighty Joe trying to get that second rank of Transcendence. He is going to go Transcendence. Um, Nine times out of ten, we talk about this item and tell you to ignore the mana aspect of it. This time around, it's going to be a major part of the selling point of this item. Yeah, totally. I, I still want to say you should ignore the numbers and just think of it as you never run out of mana. Because let's be honest, you never run out of mana. You have to try really hard to do that and invade on the left hand side geb could be in trouble as the bomb is going to go up from ymir nice rotation out from poseidon though to turn this around whirlpool he's going to create some room freya up in the air with the valkyrie's discretion will land four hits but it's not enough to kill the rom alt will snipe it out a kill on the right hand side from an invade and now it's chalk versus yanis one for one over there 
Yeah, that's going to be unfortunate for Chiquette. She'll fall down level 6. Enemy jungler just about level 6 as well. Two junglers fell. One for one trade. That's going to wind up being not so bad for either team. Uh, your jungler dying in sync with the other jungler? That's kind of what you want if you ever lose your jungler. Now, I do want to mention uh, 400 gold down or 700 gold down at 4 minutes is... Uh, the state of Mr. Muddy Joe, it's gotten a little bit worse since Poseidon's rotation over the left-hand side, making it... Well, wave to wave, actually, no, still about 700 gold, but... So, like, first blood, let's call it 500, and then another 200, just from being the better pusher, forcing the Mr. Muddy Joe to recall, forcing him under tower. Poseidon's lane control was still huge, and this transcendence isn't gonna be online just yet. One or two more waves. Yeah, right now he's sitting at 660 gold uh, in hand. He's going to need a little bit more to finish off that rank 3 transcendence. It's a significantly more expensive item than we see yeah. this, the, the other stacking builds. It's kind of why we don't see it as often, Krat. Heartseeker, 1,900 gold. Transcendence, 2,600. There are a lot of situations where I'm sure you'd love to be able to buy transcendence. It, once you finish it, you actually get a ton of physical power immediately, and then the stacks add some, like, 20 on top. But it's something like 55 physical power off the bat and then skills up to about 75. Um, and then the late game can go higher to 95. Making it the highest physical power item in the game. And once again, you never run out of mana, which can be very handy on certain characters. But how do you fit into your build? 2700 gold is just an incredible amount. and It doesn't have lifesteal. So when you're getting a Transcendence instead of Devil Gloves, it basically means you have to go into Aussie. You have to turn that attack speed pen slot into an attack speed pen lifesteal slot. And while Aussie is very stat efficient, it also doesn't give you a large sum of anything. It's a nice balance. The Aussie is very, very inexpensive. So that's going to yeah. be all right. Left lane, anti-baff, little bit of trouble. Knock up from Geb, stun from Geb. Reflexive ultimate, that was good timing, but now she's on the ground, nowhere to go. Slowed out by the rollout, looking for the hits is AF Carminox. Anti-buff really trying to make it happen. Here comes the minion wave, just a pair of a second too late. Anti-buff is gonna fall to the hand of Rom. Hunter, Hunter for Hunter, kill right there. Level eight, AF Carminox, level 10. I mean, honestly, those jukes were really impressive. He was doing a great job of avoiding attacks. The problem was there were no rotations coming. He wasn't actually going anywhere. I, so it was just delaying his death. Well, with the minion wave coming up, um, you could juke, hide behind the minion wave. It's a ROM, so yeah. if he's got astral arrows, you're toast. I, I applaud the decision. And honestly, if you had one more second out there, Kret, I think we might have seen Afraid actually get away with some, with some good screens set by the minions. Uh, unfortunately, just not in the cards today. Laser Unicorn is going to try and make something happen. Middle lane as a well. Going to get rid of the Kraken, but Samister is there with the overhand smash. Jolts going to go ahead and earn her third death of the game. Yeah, and so that's, first of all, good on Jolts to get that early Aegis. That's great. But then you come out of Aegis, you're in a Whirlpool, so you can't move. Fear no evil, you're still dead. The problem with the Aegis is, while it can immune an incredible amount of damage, it also is a setup for your opponents in a lot of cases. I mean... You just don't move. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but left-hand side, anti Bath in trouble. Now, there is no Hoonbots ultimate, but an wow. auto-attack from AFK or Monix is going to be enough to get the kill. Pushing onto the tower a little bit. Laser Unicorns are definitely going to want to look for a few more objectives. They've got a nice experience lead of 4,000, but they want to catch their gold up as well. So, Gold Fury would be really great. Sort of looking at Gold Fury's Laser Unicorns, we talked about it slightly, 2,800 gold in the lead. They are going to start it, middle lane and support shading over here to start the gold objective right here in the left-hand jungle. Already at about 50% or less, this is going to look like it's uncontested. Taking a brief look at the wards, no vision at all, five hungry Hindus, there was let a the Gold word. Fury fall. There's a sentry ward that was counterwarded by Geb, and then they started the Gold Fury. So they didn't see it, but you can infer. That said, could they have contested anyway? I mean, there's a Poseidon with no Kraken, but there was also a lot of presence there too. It started off with just the support in the Poseidon, but as you said, Poseidon's level 12 already, highest yeah. level in the entire game at the moment. Typhlosion, solo laner, 
Only one close. Three members over here. They're going to start it. Samister drops both ultimates. Lucci gets the kill with his. Three more members of Laser Unicorns all bearing down on DD Ruler. A lot of damage coming out. He's slowed. Couple of hits. Overhand smash going to claim the life of that support. Mr. Mighty Joe underneath his tower. Got to be careful here. They can dive. They could dive. Good portal from Typhlosion to provide some defense. That's a great move from Giannis. Great positioning. In the left-hand lane, a lot of lane presence coming out from this ROM and is going to be able to continue pressing onto this tower. Hoonbots has to back in the middle lane, so expect that to sort of disperse. Uh, laser Unicorns just don't really have what they need to take down this tower at this point. And while they can hold the lane, and Shock can honestly defend 1v2 and be fine, jump in from Ur. Shock could actually turn this around if he really wants to. He's just going to go back under tower and play it safe. I honestly, I think he should have turned on Ur there. Yeah, that's uh, Roms in the air. We're talking. This is exactly what we're talking about. Good response from Freya. I oh. like that. I really like how that oh. works out. Harmonics ulted from Suket onto the tower. Couple of hits. Anti Bath gets the kill. That's an important small factor. Yeah. AF Harmonics is going to fall. Currently two one sixty one hundred gold. Anti Bath earns that kill. Still over a thousand gold down, but that kill will stop the bleeding just a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I want to say that was probably a 400 gold kill in total. In the solo lane, Yanis is going to try and ult away, but a nice jump from Hoonbots will be able to get the chase. Another portal coming through, and I am mad for Samister. Now Kraken coming out will be Aegis by Jolts, who's going to be able to jump away. Fear no evil juked out as well. But there's really no... Well, DD Rule might be able to get a wall, might be able to get Freeze, and this could be a good fight, but the Freeze is going to miss, and now damage onto the Emir, and he is on the back foot, trying to run away, trying to wall, but taken down with the Somersault. Damage onto Jolts coming out from the raw. That's a slow death bane to get away. The thing about Ymir is the moment you're on the back foot, you're in a lot of trouble. You have to wall yourself off, wall your team off, and get out of there, and that's your only hope. He's really a character that needs to be on the aggressive, even when playing from behind. Yeah, you know, I really, I think, I think Five Finger Hindus tried to get a little too aggressive there, Kret. So yeah. Kev had an absolutely fantastic evasion s sequence right there. Really baited out a lot of ultimates. Call that a win. Instead, they pressured, they tried to get more than they could really handle. And Lucci's level 14 already, folks. 7,000 gold. Nobody on Five Finger Hindus has eclipsed 6,000. AF Karmonics in the Hunter lane for the third time. Does exactly what we talked about, picks and bans. Get her low, alt up, auto win. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's just so difficult to deal with because of user movement ability in the fight. To get away, well, then you're basically a sitting duck. Left mid camp is going to go to Laser Unicorn's left tower. It's probably going to go to Laser Unicorn's buying some time with that wall, but can't buy enough because Astral Arrow is indeed is going to get his life there. It was a good play if he wasn't up against Rom, who breaks the rules of 80 carries. You don't get to body block him. You don't get to wall him off. AF Carmonics, really, you know, we talked about Lucci a lot, 2-0 and 3, good slash line starting off, uh, but kind of gifted in this lane with the Uller, who, who Poseidon does well early, Uller, quite the opposite. In the yeah. long lane, though, um, Freya versus Rom, I actually think that's a very good matchup uh, for the Freya, so... We see the Rob AF Carmonics coming out on the better side of things, despite the uh, character differences. The, the thing about Freya is she doesn't have competitive clear, basically. So at what all? you need to do, yeah, at all with any hunter. I mean, even Cupid laughs at her clear. Um, but what she needs to do is she needs to stand lean and be scary and just walk up behind. Right. If you try and clear, I'm gonna banish you, and I'm gonna mess you up. But on the right-hand side, portal out onto Mexu Frozen. This definitely could be a big pick. Cataclysm will come out. The Ymir ult used and pops a little bit early. And that Geb's going to be able to reposition. Now a Cirquet ult onto Chalk. He's going to turn around the Storm Call and Typhlosion's getting very low. Able to ult out. The Kraken is going to find two. And now it's Mr. Mighty Joe in trouble. Title surge with the snipe. Very low health. Nice Aegis. Tempest to get the kill. Typhlosion unfortunately ulted in the exact wrong direction. Instead of ulting back towards home, ulted a little bit forward, I guess, in an attempt to juke. Actually walked out of a portal into an overhand smash coming out from Samister. That's going to be rough. Entire right hand lane tower is completely down. Not going to push the Phoenix just yet. But this game looking very dire for the five angry Hindus. 14 and a half, almost 15 minutes into the game, Cret. We have an 
gold lead. It's going to be 11,000 gold. And Laser Unicorn's winning 14 to 2. And it looks like the call is going to be the 15 minute fire giant. Laser Unicorn's in a very commanding position. They do have chin size done on their shock. Chin size is still an wow. incredible item for this character. It takes a lot to get going, but. Chin size is still an incredibly gold efficient item. Despite the fact that it costs 3,000 gold, Ymir's gonna blink in, but he's gonna find the fire giant is done. Shockwave out, fear no evil. That seems like a little bit overkill, but it will get the kill, and AF Carmonix is going to lock down that one onto DD Ruler. Now it's sitting at 5, 1, and 0 on ROM. Did die in that left hand lane when he ulted up and was collapsed on like crazy. <laughs> These team this team is very, very potent just right now, Craig, just yeah. absolutely bearing down on their opponents. anti Baff wants to make something happen, misses the banish, realizes AF Carmonix is level 17. That's four levels the Freya's senior, so not really able to pull anything out. Have to play it careful, come out right in front. Blink in by Gab, gets the setup. A lot of people jump away. That's a great win for Angry Hindus. Uh, Rob's in the air, though, gonna power out damage in the back line. Not enough to kill Sir Cat. That's good for Through her. Through space and time, gets on the backward. kill! Typhlosion gets the blind snipe through two walls on two. a rolling out gap. That, that is great prediction and a little bit of luck in the right time, but he doesn't have it this time as he portals through a wall, finds a team, a Kraken, taken down. DD Ruler as well. Lucci with the double. Uses beads for cooldown reduction and another title surge. Doesn't connect that. Now Lucci could be in trouble. Turned around upon, but he's not going to take enough damage as jumping away is the Sarket. Uh, double kill. Wow, the beats coming out by bots are gonna get a double, and that's the Phoenix. That's gonna be the middle Phoenix. We see Laser Unicorn shading over here to the left hand Phoenix as well. Uh, teams aren't long enough into this game to really have the respawn timers to just go for the outright win, folks. So, Laser Unicorns are gonna have to take down this Phoenix. They're gonna do exactly that with uh, Fed Rom at the moment. Jump in from Jads. Good damage on to Lucci. Savage Boom. is going to go ahead and take out the circuit before anything can really be confirmed. Two Phoenixes down for Laser Unicorns. They're going to retreat into the jungle, find a better opportunity to come in and go for the win. They still have the fire. You know, sometimes people forget that Hoonbots is an assassin. He's really, most of the time, more of a team fighter. But in that situation, uh, Samus is so far ahead, didn't have his Deathbringer yet. But he does an overhand smash and immediately auto attacks, and it was an instant 700 damage. Absolutely destructive when you do get that far ahead on the Hoonbots. And now with the Deathbringer, that number is going to go up substantially. I mean, it's a 600 damage crit or so. So very, very scary. <laughs> scary is a understatement, but Freya does have speed buff. So there is an upside to every omelet today here in the European Challenger Cup. Guys, this is week four. Uh, Hindu Man currently traveling from the TSM Invitational. You can check out that rebroadcast. Should be on sometime today. He'll be traveling, so it's myself and Kret handling the broadcast for us today. Bearing down on the left lane is Laser Unicorns, and they are showing no quarter. Lucci and Samus are diving behind the tower itself. Double ult's going to actually miss both targets, but doesn't matter. Lemuritz takes out the support in the back line. DD Ruler down for 25 seconds. Now, it's they're going to look for this Phoenix, and once three Phoenixes are down, it's just so hard to make recovery. Blink in, Cataclysm damage onto Antibath, take it down by AF Carmonix. Nice Circuit peel, she's going to jump away. The Phoenix will be turned on, it will fall, and that's basically the nail in the coffin. All that's left is to lower it into the grave. The Titan is remaining. Creeps are coming in. Rom pushing people back in the fountain. Titan resets back onto Laser Unicorn's Whirlpool. What ults do they have? They got an Astral Barrage. Titan will reset, sitting at 60% health. Blink in from Ymir. Damage onto Lemuritz. Rom's up in the air. Looking for Uller. Doesn't find the hit. And it looks like, for now, Laser Unicorns are going to back off and re-engage when they have more creeps. Yep, here they come in. There's the Shock ult. That's going to silence a lot of the problems that TD Ruler could really bring to the table. Samister comes back for the hit. Turns around. Goes for the Titan. Gets the kill! 19 minutes, 20 seconds of smite game time. Five Ingrid Hindus wind up on the poor end of this one. Laser Unicorns take the victory. Uh, congratulations to Laser Unicorns moving on to the next round, which I actually believe is the round of 
eight. Yeah, so they're going to be moving on directly into the round of eight where they're expected to face Agilitas, assuming there are no upsets. Agilitas is the first seed in this tournament. We're going to be checking out a different match coming up next, guys. But first, let's talk about this game. And where do you think it went wrong in the picks? Um, I mean, a large part of the problem is what we talked about earlier. There was no middle laner, so we, we took a hunter into the middle lane role. Yeah. I I just don't like the Uller pick crap. If this sure. was... If this was an Aneath, or actually, my number one pick for this role would have been an on her. If we saw yeah. an on her in this middle lane, I think this could have been a much different scenario. Uh, and Freya, unfortunately, I think it was honestly less anti baff story and more AF Karmonix. He just played lights out, 6 1 and 5, really made use of his entire kit. Uh, Freya had some good moves. I like the counter of Rom's ultimate with Valkyrie's discretion. Can't hit me if I can't hit you. <laughs> neener neener essentially i liked the play unfortunately just didn't wind up on her side of the game today i mean the other hand sir Ket, uh versus rune bot samus sure had a very dominant slash line seven one and eight topping kills for his team jolts never got going and when you're on a character that has less damage than usual once again deathbane is bugged players are still liking to pick sir Ket, and she's still good but when you can't get rolling initially how can you really be that late game assassin? There are a lot of there's a lot of issues with Sir Ket's early game at this point when her death pain isn't hitting as hard as it usually should. You have to try a little bit harder with those ganks, and Jolts just wasn't able to make it happen when he needed the kills to get rolling. We're gonna head into our next game, guys, in just a few minutes. So stay tuned. See you guys soon.